Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome back to fishing. So we are just out of work and we are en route to the spot. Uh, nothing too fancy planned for today. Uh, we're gonna get out there and just try and make fishing happen. Not planning on doing anything too crazy, but if you're watching this video, one of a couple things is gonna happen. Uh, we're gonna be fishing shallows like we have been doing, just throwing lures. I actually made a lure run, We've got some new stuff wanna check out. But additionally, uh, we're gonna throw a carp line out there. You might think I'm crazy because I'm gonna go carp fishing. And you might even think I'm crazier because I wanna keep one of these carps. That's right, I wanna try and get a, a catch clean cook carp edition going. Caught many carp in my life. Uh, not that I uh, target them a lot, from time to time I do. Never cup one. Heard a lot of things about carp, good and bad, mostly bad, but I wanna figure it out for myself. So we're gonna get out there, I'll show you my setup, and hopefully with a little luck, we'll get a little fishing accomplished. We got our carp set up good to go. What we have here, a small little hook lined with corn, and then we have a little dough ball, which is just simply bread that's been squished together until it gets all doughy, white bread to be specific. No nutrition needed for these carp. And we're just gonna cast it out there, let that marinate, set the drags to nothing. That way our rod doesn't get pulled into the water. Leave that like so. And just to really get things going, a little chum. I've been chumming this spot quite a bit, you know. I took a little bit of a hiatus because my car was in the shop. But we're back and this is the third day of fishing this area, chumming up. So let's hope that uh, the carp have started to catch on. And we're just gonna let that sit, let it work its magic. All right, while the carp thing does its thing, we are going to try a new lure. I just got this at the store. It's a Rapala. It's a Rapala Shadow Wrap Shad Deep. So I had the, the Deep 11, which is a bit longer and thinner with three hooks. This is a bit more bulbous, definitely resembling a shad, slightly wider, maybe a little bit longer bill. And it says this is slow rising. So definitely want to check this out. Uh, never heard of the Shad, I'm sorry, the, the Shadow Wrap 11 Deep until you know, a couple weeks ago, and that lore has definitely been added to my arsenal. So let's see what this one's about. Uh, never tried it before. All right, spring has finally sprung. You know, after countless false alarms, I think we're finally out of the winter woods. And if you're wondering, it's May 20th right now. And if that sounds obvious, let me just remind you that like a week and a half ago, it was snowing here, so nothing's obvious. All right, let's try this shad deep or whatever. Let's see if this does a trick. Never fished this floor. Okay, right here I'm pausing the clip because this is important. I totally screwed up right here. I completely forgot that I was already recording, so I'm getting a bite on my carp line right now. I put my bass inshore setup down, and I'm running towards the carp setup. I accidentally, well, I purposefully hit the record button, but because the camera was already running, it stopped recording, so I missed the entire fight. And it was a funny one, too, because I pretty much destroyed my net trying to grab this fish. Not because the net was a piece of crap, but because it was very old and it was already on its last limb. So we got the carp out. Uh, I apologize for not getting the fight, but I do promise that there is a carp fight coming up. Uh, just stick with the video and you'll see what I mean in a little bit. All right, folks. A little bigger than I wanted, but we'll take him. Carpe diem. <laughs> All right, so we got this carp. I completely forgot that I already had the camera going, so we lost the fight. Um, there wasn't too much to it. Almost completely botched it, but uh, we got this guy. We're gonna bleed him out for a little bit, and then we're gonna get him on ice, but there really isn't too much to it. Uh, the setup, you just throw the corn out there and you play the waiting game. 
right, the first part of this clean cook we gotta do is scale the fish. So we're gonna see if we can get these scales off. We're just gonna go against the meat. Just get all these scales off this carp. Just get all those scales off, go against the grain. Make filleting a lot easier later. That's one side. So one thing we did before we take this thing home is we scaled it just to leave a lot of that mess at home. It'll make life a lot easier when we fillet this fish because these scales are like thick armor. So this will make life a lot easier for getting fillets off this fish. Consolation carp on video. All right. So I'm sorry I didn't get that other one on video, but we got this one. That'll have to do. Feels nice. This one we're definitely not keeping. And we will close out with this fish. I don't know how we're gonna get it without a good net. Cause we kind of broke our net with the last one. That be a Cyprianus Carpio if I've ever seen one. Oh, uh, that would have been the one to keep too, but whatever. That one's probably a better eating size, but he's still kind of big, so I don't feel that bad. I'm just gonna try and gill him up. You don't want to come in. Don't worry, buddy. You are the lucky one today. Oh, the Mud King is strong with this one. A little carp scoop. He's got a ton of crap in his stomach. Look at that, that tiny little hook. All it took. I give ye the Mud King. Let's get him back. All right, cool. Got some footage for a catch. Now let's get this guy home and clean him up. Okay, so we just got back from the water. Uh, we scaled this thing or tried to get a good scale of the carp while we were there just to save some of the mess. So just a little background. Uh, this is the first carp that I have ever kept in my entire life. Uh, it's definitely not the first one I've caught. These things have a reputation of just being pure garbage. So I am <laughs> I'm actually pretty excited to keep this in, uh, clean and eventually eat this or some of it. I've heard conflicting reviews of how these things taste. People I have known and trust have told me they're delicious. And then there's people that I've seen on YouTube and other people that I don't know if they've ever tried one that said they're absolutely foul. So very polarizing. And I am very interested to see how this turns out. But just a little history about these fish. This is a common carp. There are many different species of carp. I don't know if like you remember some of you guys, if you were around in like the, you know, mid 2000s 2007 2008 2009 there was the the asian carp craze where they got into some waterways and were invasive this is not that kind of carp this is a common carp uh, if you're familiar with what a koi is it's basically the same species just not nearly as fancy looking these things were not native to america they were introduced back in the i believe 19 or 1800s 19th century maybe even earlier uh, but they were brought to America, ironically, as a food fish. Um, I think part of it might have to do with how big they grow. They grow very large. Um, but 
but they were brought here with the intention of being something to eat. So I'm quite curious uh, whether or not there is any real food value to these things whatsoever. So I just wanted to say that before we dig into this thing. All right, here goes. First time cleaning a common carp. I tried to get most of the scales off, but I definitely left some. So yeah, there's still a couple right there, but we're just gonna dig in, get in there. Uh, it's definitely fairly tough as I expected it would be. Um, definitely got some scales still left. I did a very quick job, but I can feel bones. This is definitely the biggest fish that I've dug into so far. Um, one thing I'll also say while I clean this, I took this fish out of the water. Uh, let me rephrase that. I kept this thing and I specifically wanted to keep it now because I kept this from one of the cleanest bodies of water that I figure I could have gotten it from. It is a drinking water uh, lake that we got this thing from. I would probably never want to keep this thing from a lake in, you know, a not so clean body of water. Uh, I probably would never want to keep this thing in a Long Island lake where I spend a lot of my time in the summer. So I figured this is the opportune time to get it. So anyways, in terms of impressions, definitely fairly tough meat. You're definitely seeing a lot of color there, which I've heard about. It's almost like orangish. Uh, these things do have a reputation of being oily. So we cut through. Before we finish though, we're going to flip over to the other side. Get in there. Got the newspaper to contain some of the mess. Uh, these things have a reputation or are known for having a, a separate section of Y bones and the, the muscle fiber. So that's something we're gonna have to contend with later. Um, I was hoping to get a smaller one. And as you guys saw, I didn't get the fight of this one, but I caught a second one that was a little smaller, but we already dispatched this one. And honestly, I'm happy I kept this one because most of the carp that you see are very large. They're not small. So I think this is a proper, proper representation of what a carp, common carp. Oh man, that's tough. Catch clean cook is. That's some tough bone right there coming up against the rib cage. That's like saltwater tough right there. Whatever, we'll just cut around the ribs. We will just avert those ribs because they are quite uh, durable. No need to get through them because it's all bone anyways. All that was what I was trying to cut through. It's very, very tough. Those are some serious bones right there. There's one filet. Very, very dark meat, very dark. Flip them over and get the other one. Definitely a little bit better, that filet. Pretty dark meat, pretty big filet. Uh, I mean, if this is good, then it's a lot of meat to play with. But uh, if this were like a, a trout or some kind of saltwater fish or a walleye, I would go in and start, you know, cleaning all this this meat that I missed, but this thing, why bother? Uh, if I find out that this thing's good and I ever decide to keep another one of these, maybe I'll be a little bit more thorough with the clean job, but this is definitely more than enough meat. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is see if I can get rid of this skin though. Let's see if I can get rid of this skin. So unlike the trout that we've kept, uh, more like the pick roll, we're gonna get rid of this skin that still has some of the scales. This These are very large scales, as you might note. Um, not like the trout where some of them, like a lake trout, they're microscopic pra practically. So we're going to separate this. So we're going to get right under the flesh. Uh, I need a really sharp knife to do this. And hopefully we can just get scales. Jeez. Glad I scaled most of this when I was at the spot. That's good enough. And we're just going to do the same thing. with this filet. Get right under. Very, very oily meat, I imagine. Yeah. 
So here we have our somewhat finished product before we put the cook in. Uh, we were almost saying it kind of looks like tuna meat. So how about that? We'll call it a freshwater tuna. That's how we'll market this thing. Um, I can tell it's very oily. It's, I tried to get some of the bones out, but the bones are just in there, like they're Y bones. So you really have to do some serious surgery to get these out. I think the way to do it is just, we're going to eat it and pick around the bones, but, uh, we're going to try some of this. We might cook it a couple different ways, but the way we're going to do our, our video for this is just the simple butter, salt, pepper, and analysis. So you got that to look forward to. Uh, that's where we're going to go next with this. All right, there it is, our common carp filet, a.k.a. mud tuna. <laughs> so we're going to get this thing in. Full disclaimer, this is one day later, not even 24 hours, so quite red. I'm going to throw it on there. Got a little butter on the pan. Oh, got to get that going again. Uh, I know there are many different ways that you can prepare these things, but for the sake of consistency, we are preparing this the exact same way that we've prepared every other fish thus far, because we're not necessarily doing a recipe test. We're testing the quality of the meat at its most basic approachable level. So we got that thing cooking a little butter. We're going to cover it and we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so we've had it on the fryer for a couple minutes. It's definitely getting a, an interesting color, particularly on the side that the skin was attached to. That's definitely the oiliness there, but uh, we'll give it a few more minutes and then we will give it its official taste test. All right, I think the moment is at hand. So we've got our carp. That's the nicer looking side. Got a little salt pepper on it. Put the fish on the plate. Get a clean fork just to get a completely objective readout. All right, I'm a little nervous about this one. I have no idea what to expect here. Definitely some bones still in there. As I mentioned, when I cleaned it, I could not get them all out. Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. All right, so I took a moment off camera to think about what I wanted to say. And this is what I'm gonna say. These fish have a horrible reputation amongst at least Americans in terms of food value. And after chewing on the piece and taking another bite, it's not absolutely terrible. Um, it's just kind of bitter. Um, it's not as fishy as I thought it'd be. It does have kind of a bitter aftertaste. Um, obviously, I would not recommend this as being the primary or best way to prepare this, but I did this just for the sake of comparison to the other fishes. It's a little mushier than the other fish we've eaten, particularly the trout and pickerel. Definitely a bit, a little bit fishier, but not crazy fishy, not crazy oily. Just kind of mushy. I don't know. It's just not impressive. Um, this isn't to say that these couldn't be prepared in a good way. I'm sure there's some very interesting recipes. And I remember like in preparation for this, like as I've always wanted to see YouTube videos of people catching, cleaning, and cooking these, I saw some interesting takes on how to prepare them. Obviously this isn't one of them. I'm sure there's some very interesting things you can do. This is not one of those videos. This is just, you know, the most approachable way you can cook one of these things. And I honestly would say there's nothing too exceptional here but I don't think they necessarily deserve an absolutely terrible wrap. So that's kind of my analysis. If I had to put a number to this, just based on, you know, how it tastes, I would put it at like a 6.5. It's passable, nothing to write home about. I guess the cool thing is you get a lot of meat to work with, and if you know some interesting recipes, it can work. I don't off the top of my head, but if you're just gonna cook it like this, there's far better fish to catch, clean, and cook. So that's my take. Uh, common carp catch clean cook. I hope you enjoyed the mighty mud tuna uh, More fish to come soon. I definitely am happy. I got this one out of the way If you have any recommendations of fish I should go after please feel free to put them in the comments But otherwise more to come soon. Hope you enjoyed. See y'all next time